Hey, welcome to Are You Geek 2, and this is our very first video, and we're going to show you a little something you can do with the Radeon RX 480 from AMD. We're specifically going to use the Sapphire Nitro Plus OC version, which is an 8 gig board that's factory overclocked. And we're going to put the brakes on this card by controlling our cooling a little bit to save us some on our power bill, to reduce some of our heat dissipation, and I think you're actually going to be surprised at what happens here. So first, what's different about this card from the AMD version is that it's clocked at 1,342 megahertz instead of 1266 that's the OC version uh, this board actually has two 95 millimeter fans instead of just one fan and it comes with two HDMI 2.0 two display port 1.4s and one DVI-D instead of the AMD version which has one HDMI 2.0 and three display port 1.4s so this is a pretty good performing card it's got a really decent price but one of the issues as with all graphics card is that they're hot they run really 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 hot and this card will run right up to 90 degrees Celsius and set there all day long. That's a lot of power and that's a lot of heat. We actually have two of these cards that we normally use. So we're actually doubling our power and doubling our heat. So we're going to set this up with just one card. We're going to tone those temperatures down using AMD's Wattman. If you haven't used this tool, it's a really good tool for controlling your graphics card. We're going to get this all set up and we're going to run some benchmarks. And we're going to see that we actually don't lose any performance. But in some cases, we actually gain a little bit. Using AMD's Wattman, you can see the temperature settings are actually set to a target of 75 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that actually means. When I use this profile, my graphics card goes to 90 degrees. I have no idea what the 75 is doing. It just seems to ignore it. But the max is set to 90, which is the max that you can actually set the application to, and the card will run at that temperature. Uh, also notice that there's a power limit of 0%. We're actually gonna change these three settings, and we're going to run our benchmarks after the chain. So what we want to change those two is we're going to leave the target at 75, but we're going to set a max temperature of 77 degrees, and we're going to set our power limit to negative 10%. Actually, I'm not quite sure how this power limit feature actually works. I thought it would underclock the GPU by 10%. And while we don't quite reach max megahertz on our processor while it's running under load, it's not a 10% difference. The other thing is while you're controlling your temperature this way, you're not actually going to affect the amount of power that your GPU is using when it's at low or idle loads. This is actually going to kick in when the temperature gets to 75 degrees. So using your computer in day-to-day -day stuff is actually going to be no different. Most people won't exceed the 75 degrees unless they're actually doing something intensive like playing video games. If we look at our power usage at our wall, we can see that we're going to use about 270 watts of power just sitting here idling. Uh, now why is it 270 watts of power? The computer's running, there's a screen plugged in, we've got an Xbox One S setting here in idle mode. There's a number of devices attached, speakers and things like that. They all consume power and that's just going to be our baseline. And there's no real difference between our default settings and our reduced power settings. So the first benchmark that we ran was in the Heaven Benchmark Utility. This is actually a DirectX 11 utility, and while the graphics card supports DirectX 12, I don't have a DirectX 12 utility to test with. So we've set the Heaven Engine to max details on everything. It's at 1080p full screen, and our graphics card settings are actually set to max temperatures. The 90 degrees Celsius is what we're running at here. There's a number of neat scenes that Heaven runs through here. It's all kind of medieval looking, and there's an element of fantasy with floating ships that should be in the sea. It's a really good tool and it's got some great eye candy uh, and it gives us a decent benchmark and for us with all things being equal it's going to give us a way to measure our before and after of the changes that we're going to make. So once the benchmark actually completes we get a max frames per second of 119.2, a minimum of 21.1 and an overall of 54.1. That's not too bad for this graphics card at 1080p full screen gaming with the details set all the way up. 54 frames per second. It's a pretty respectable score. So when we tune down those thermal settings and reduce that maximum CPU temperature and rerun the Heaven benchmark, it runs through the exact same thing again and gives us new numbers. And what we see here is quite surprising. We get a max frames per second of 150.2, a minimum of 24.4, and an overall of 67.2. If you remember, the default settings gave us an overall 54.1. That's actually a 20% gain by reducing the temperature, saving us some power, and keeping our room a little less warm in the summertime. So it looks like like these settings might hold a little merit for us. So our second benchmark that we want to test with is a little tool that mines out Ethereum
Ethereum coin. If you're not familiar with Ethereum, it's very similar to Bitcoin. It's a little easier to mine. It's a little less ASIC device specific and a little more GPU device specific. Uh, with one of these cards, you can mine out an Ethereum coin in a pool, one in about every four or five days. However, don't be fooled, whereas Bitcoin's over $1,000 at the making of this video, Ethereum coin's worth about $8. However, the Ethereum mining tool is very good at taxing our GPU. Once we run up Ethereum, our GPU is gonna go to 100% and it's gonna set there until we tell it to stop. Unlike video games where the frames per second are gonna vary, the amount of objects are gonna vary, and everything's going to affect our frames per second and our GPU temperature, the Ethereum mining tool will just run full force using everything we have. The internet says that the benchmarks for Ethereum mining on an RX 480 are about 25 mega hashes per second. And we can confirm that that's about what we get with one of these cards. So with our default settings from the factory, running the Ethereum tool, we can see that we're going to bounce between about 20 mega hashes per second up to 25 mega hashes per second, and it will continue to do this for as long as we run the tool. However, if we run the tool with our reduced temperature settings, we can see that our numbers don't really change that much. We occasionally dip to 19, but overall we're still between 20 and 25. It's almost as if we didn't reduce the power at all, but we still save on the heat and we still save on our power bill. So it's a pretty safe bet that we can tune these power settings down and not lose any performance on our graphics card. And in the case of our frames per second benchmark, we actually got a 20% advantage. And while we're putting out 15 degrees Celsius less heat on this GPU, we're also burning less power on this GPU, and that translates into less power at the wall. If you remember, our idle power is about 270 watts at the wall, just sitting here doing nothing. When we run our benchmarks at the default factory settings, we push this up to about 500 watts. It probably hovers around 470, but easily jumps to 500 under load. And if we tone those down and reduce our power settings, we see that we run anywhere between 425 and 450. That's about a 25 watt power difference. And if your computer is on all the time, when you're using an extra 25 watts per hour, 24 hours a day, I don't know about you, but I pay about 11 cents per kilowatt hour. And this is gonna burn about 18 kilowatts over the course of a month. That's gonna save me about $2 per month or about $25 a year in electricity. Now I have two of these cards, so it's actually gonna save me about $50 a year. While it's not going to buy you a new car, $50 is still $50. The other place that we can measure power is actually at the GPU. If we look back at GPU Z, we can see that our idle temperature is about 20 watts of power. And under full load, that will increase up to about 125 watts while the GPU temperature gets all the way up to its max of 90 degrees. We didn't actually let the GPU get up to 90 degrees, but I can assure you that it does indeed move right up to 90 and set there. If we use that same benchmark, but using our reduced heat settings, we can see that we start off at about the same wattage, but when our GPU temperature actually reaches about 76 degrees, that power draw, it kind of levels off somewhere around 100 watts. There's some dips high, there's some dips low, but that's going to happen in both cases. And the other thing, as we said before, the default factory settings are gonna let this GPU run at 1,342 megahertz, whereas our reduced power settings bring it down to about 1,250 megahertz. Now this, of course, occurs after we hit our max settings. The GPU will still run at 1,342 megahertz all the way up until we hit that temperature, and then it begins to throttle. So why do we think this is occurring? Well, I'm not an electrical engineer, and I'm certainly not an expert on GPUs. However, I believe we could probably compare it to a decent speaker. So what happens if you've got a good sounding car stereo, and you turn the volume all the way up, and then the sound goes totally to crap? So what occurs in your car stereo is clipping. So the speaker isn't able to perform at the maximum power that the amplifier sends to it, and the audio signal above and beyond that maximum power is simply dropped. And that's what makes your speakers sound terrible. While the GPU doesn't have the characteristics of a speaker, it's a very similar concept. The chip is capable of performing at 1,342 megahertz, but it's not able to keep the temperature under control any longer. So the clipping that occurs is at the actual processor level. So instead of continuing to process at maximum speed, so just like the speaker, it's actually going to turn itself off and drop anything above and beyond. And this is because the characteristics of the fans are unable to keep the chip at the desired temperature. So the chip itself will kind of turn itself off like that so that the fans don't have as much heat to cool to begin with. And there you have it. If you have an RX 480 or you're thinking about buying one, simply tuning down the heat profile will save you a couple of bucks and let you run your air conditioner a little less in the summertime. Thanks for watching Are You Geek 2? And if you have some expert knowledge or some opinions on why you think that this card actually runs better with the reduced heat output, please put them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.